So let's take this idea, right? Yeah. That if you go to restaurants and you see your friends, if you go to church, right, if you demand those rights, mm. well, that's about you want freedom that the law gives you. Mm. You're being selfish in doing that. And you should be ashamed of yourselves. Christianity is about love. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, again, it's, uh, I mean, you can say um, that can be, I mean, again, like uh, taking the risk, really uh, assessing, you know, whether you really impacting through your decisions. Uh, you know, if I'm, if I know I'm sick, for example, if I got the COVID or symptoms of it, and I am still wanted to go and have a party, then I'm selfish. Right. You know? But I know that I'm, I don't carry anything, um, and I, I use a mask whenever needed. I wash my hands. I'm cautious, you know, caring for other people. But still, I'm I'm want, willing to meet with other friends that 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 they know that they're not sick or don't have any symptoms, anything like that. Then it's I think it's general, um, you know, exercising your general rights and um, you know, yeah, socializing together and or helping the friend or anything like that. It's, I don't think that it's it's selfish. Um, you know, same same way, you can like shame someone saying like, you know, I can shame my children saying like, oh, uh, driving a car is risky, you know, you shouldn't get your license, just stay and use the public transportation. Are we like willing to put, you know, a lot of restrictions because the car is, uh, because a lot of accidents is happening, people's, you know, lives are ruined and they're sick and most of the cases people are dying. Are we going to do that? And telling people that wanted to exercise the rights to, to drive the car is like shaming them. I think it's same same here when you try to shame people. Right. Yeah. And, it's, it, and it's so not a logic-based argument, right? Because, okay, no, I val- freedom is a value. Right. That I also want for my neighbors. Right. The, the, it's it's quite it, so the the idea that freedom is just like I want to do whatever I want to do and then everyone else can go screw themselves. No. Right. I actually think freedom is good for people. Right. So I want other people to have freedom. I want yes. my children to have freedom. I want the owner of the coffee shop who's taking plenty of precautions to be able to open and make her livelihood. Right. It's it. Yeah, when you demand your own rights, it doesn't mean just you demanding your own rights. Right. As demanding your rightful rights is going to help the neighbor, you know, or a businessman and other other people too, you know, like it's not but if you become silent when they break your law or rights, then more silent people and then they can control and impose more restrictions and this can, you know, communities and countries can become easily, you know, dictatorships or the countries like, you know, Turkmenistan and other places where they say that they have a good loss, but but only the the desires and the, the agendas of the ruling elite is followed. And, and only restrictions are put on to people when that restriction is going to serve the purpose of the ruling elite, not the, you know, general population. Yeah. Right. And the, and, and, and there's, and there's, and it's, 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 it's this really weird bait and switch in some ways, because the amount of Christians I hear talking about, well, the loving thing to do is to sort of stay isolated. When when Jesus when Jesus talks about separating the sheep and the goats, right? right? It's I was sick and you did not visit me, or I was in prison and you did not visit me, right? And and so it's not to say you can never have a reasonable lockdown, right? Like if you if you're carrying the bubonic plague, there's a seventy five percent chance of death, right? Doesn't mean you can never have that. But in general, right, the essence of love is up close and personal. Yeah, it's being there, present for yeah. people, yeah. gathering together, right? Not keeping distance from people. No. Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, as I said, I mean, even um, historically, a lot of sicknesses were there, but the Christians were the one of the first, those who who went into 
places were the untouchables, you know, and, and they ministered to those people. You know, still like, you know, leprosy colonies in India and other places. The I, I haven't seen any other groups or organizations sending people to minister to those people. It's the Christians. I went to India and, and ministered to a leprosy colony, knowing that I may, you know, there's a chance that I may get, uh, you know, virus or whatever sickness as I go and pray and touch those people and clean them and bathe them and that kind of stuff. But Christians been going to the places where the, you know, more sicknesses they can get and it can be dangerous for them, but they were willing to go and, you know, serve uh, those communities. I think that's uh, that's our calling Um to be, you know, out there and ministering to people and love them and and take care of them and serving each other in our communities. That's that's our DNA, I think. And we can't restrict ourselves, saying like, you know, I I, I need to isolate myself and sit and never go to anywhere. That's that's not not Christianity. The um, and I think. The, the one thing I've been thinking about this, and the reason I think perhaps you and I adapted quickly to this, is that in the sort of line of work we're in, the news we bring has every earthly possibility of completely ruining someone's life. Right. On on most levels, right? Right. You get someone killed, you get somebody kicked out of their home, you can get them kicked out of their country. Yep. All of that, right? Yeah. Yet we go because we believe we have something more valuable than that. Right. And the... And what troubles me um, right now is, again, people break the everybody everybody mm. breaks the lockdowns for something they think is important. Right. And when George Floyd is killed, right, people mm. swarm to the streets. Right. Um, when the election happens, people swarm to the streets. Right. Right. Yeah. When we don't, uh-huh. when, when we when we don't resist these t- type of things, to think for something we claim is supremely valuable, mm-hmm. that, that's kind of sending the wrong message in some ways. Right. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, that, that's correct. I mean, anybody um, breaks uh, restrictions when they, you know, value something important that needs to be done, you know. Um, even I think that Jesus, uh, Jesus was uh, blamed that he, he broke the law of Shabbat, you know, Sabbath, you know, and Jesus said, you know, uh, don't you like if you're if you're uh, uh, if you're donkey, you know, it's like uh, in the ditch. I'm not going to go and help, you know, to get get him out. I think it's the same way. You know, I think uh, anybody that, you know, sees something that needs to be done, then they, they're willing to to break break any law or any restrictions. And as you said, in you know those cases. But I think the, like when you hear, I think the media and then the government or the, you know, some parts of the government, you know, that using their platform and, and trying to shame people and guilt trip and through that try to make people obey their legitimate restrictions and and laws and that's that's a danger of or that's a sign of dictatorship that's a sign of the government control of every every life you know uh, those dictators they they use that shame and guilt tripping people saying that oh you you bring this Christianity you bring this this new ideas you know, rocking our boat, you becoming a danger for our society. How dare you can be this way or that way? And and it's all about emotions and and not not the facts, not the law, not the rights of people. But it's like what I feel is important, and and that and you, if you don't follow it, then you shame on you. Yeah. And and shame on you, but not only that. If you continue bringing shame on 
on us, I mean, on yourself, then we're going to imprison you, we're going to, you know, kill you, we can, you know, do whatever we want. It's kind of, that's, that's uh, what I hear, you know, from mainstream media, you know, shouting that uh, over to certain uh, type of people that are kind of demanding their rights and um, and that's that's sad to see in this country, you know, that is taking place. And uh, we, you know, firsthand we experienced restrictions, overall general restrictions of Soviet Union. You know, you will live in peace if you obey this these rules. You know, and we'll we'll provide you basic whatever you needed, but then. Beyond that, you can't you can't demand and ask. Only a ruling elite will will have, you know, whatever they wanted, but general population will 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 obey those you know restrictions and laws, and then then dictatorship, total dictatorship. You know, like you, Turkmenistan inherited independence, and then this guy like feels that he's like a god, you know. And imposes every every way of life, even the how what kind of house you can build, and you know the the colors on the gates of your you know house will be decided by the government because again they will shame you. Say say like the color of our uh, flag is green, and now is a symbol. Everyone needs to have a green you know gates. And if you don't, if you have a brown one, then you're shamed. You know, oh, you're not like pa- patriot because you're not like supporting this idea of love for your country and something like that. You know, it's how how people use the shame and guilt and control people's lives. And um, yeah, now in Turkmenistan, for example, you can't even go from one district to another one. Like you can't travel from Bellevue to to Kirkland if it's different different district or county. You know, you can't go to, from Pierce County to King County, and there will be a police everywhere checking every car. And even to get to next next district, you have to have a now permission from local authorities, showing that you it's a very important need, and showing that you're not sick. I mean, in every level of restrictions. I mean, people cannot travel because of that shortage of food, different things, medical supplies. There's no travel from outside, inside. And, yeah, it's it's crazy. So speak to, let's, let's say, speak to my, my kids or your granddaughter, right? How you grow up to be a person who stands up to shame right how do you, how on earth like so it's such a huge force in the world right mm-hmm. um i think people are going to understand muslim cultures a lot more in the west after this mm-hmm. but how on earth does one person stand up to all the shame like how do you become that kind of person should you become that kind of person yeah i think uh you know one thing is important that one that you have to know um you have to know what what you standing for first you have to know that it's the thing or the idea or beliefs that you're standing for is should be the right one you know a lot of people standing for something wrong and and causing a lot of bad stuff too the one we have to determine and know that we we standing for rightful thing and in our case, it's like it's our belief in in Bible and in Jesus and his words and his principles. I think uh, and it's worse to stand for those uh, principles and belief that we have. Uh, and also, I think uh, another thing is that we really um, enjoyed and flourished and been blessed to live in this country and enjoyed and seen the freedom uh, 
uh, given to us uh, through you know constitution and the uh, laws of this this land and and now if if this, these these laws and rights that we we had and in, in enjoyed it uh, is going to be taken away then we have to stand for for this you know uh, for our rights and and foundation that this country was built that that uh, really created or gave us opportunity to to live and enjoy the freedom and and you know flourish economically or different other ways um, and if this is and if someone or some group or even government tries to uh, impose restrictions or laws or uh, or through the power to take away those rights, then we have to even they try to shame us, maybe imprison us, and maybe try to kill us. We have to stand firm on that on that ground, on that foundation. I think uh, explaining to them and showing them where we came from and how even uh, the laws, good laws of the country uh, were not followed by those who ruled. Uh, the rule of law was like broken in every level and and how that damaged our lives and the lives of so many people uh, back there and then coming and experiencing the freedom uh, and of this country and now this freedom is also on the siege of you know certain groups or parts of the government then I think it shows it's a kind of a black and white and it shows that we need to stand firm yeah and I think the uh, the, 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 the and it just, the more you talk the more I realize how twisted this has become from the culture because a lot of people would hear that argument especially if it came from an American and say okay well you're about America um, we should be about the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of America. Right, right. But what you're talking about is the opposite of sort of crazy nationalism because you're talking about the government, the culture, can go in a very dark direction mm -hmm. and we need to stand on eternal principles right. and push back against those things, right? right? right. The, the, re the way you get to crazy nationalism mm -hmm. is by... Just keeping your head down, mm -hmm. letting the shame roll over you, and just kind of going along with it. Right. 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 The, if we do want to live for the kingdom of God, then we have to fight for the integrity of the countries we live in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, some some Christians probably, they think that, you know, we shouldn't be engaged at all or, you know, separate our, ourselves from from society or governance and government. Um, but I think uh, we have to shine the light and and we have to get engaged in every level of life that uh, in in our in our communities, in our countries where we live and and be impactful, you know, and do everything not like for the glory of u s or for the glory of certain, you know, party or anything like that, but for the glory of God, and uh, and that's why I think I believe that it's it's important that we the gospel needs to um, transform. We have to bring transformation values in in every level of every corner of society, um, and we sh we can't live like in the cave of just Christians. You know, we just ourselves and and church and we have to we shouldn't like leave empty you know whether it's a school board or any any you know some community you know places or city hall and ev everywhere i think christians needs to be there and and share their values and uh and a lot of you know freedoms also based on the you know the founding fathers of this country i mean it's amazing that they didn't say that we we as a government giving you these rights, they were saying that these good laws or good good rights uh, was given by creator, you know, and, and any government or any particular group of people cannot 
violate that that law of right. God, you know. And if it's God given, then government shouldn't like try to take take away that or restrict it uh, to the level that people cannot even you know practice their freedom. And right. it should be yeah should be given and it should be cherished. It should be protected. Um, and as a Christian, I think we we have to use God given. If the government, so by Romans it says. The authority and governance are given by God, and they are servants. Then, if I'm engaged in political realm, I'm a servant of God. Right. I'm serving God with the right principles, you know, and and for the glory of God. And then I can serve better, you know, rather than becoming dictator of government. My government becomes a government that will serve. His people, and for the glory of God, because of the good people are in the government and politics and other places. I think, again, the motivation of the Christian is always glorifying God and bring glory to Him by obeying uh, the moral teachings of of Bible and and God. And as we do that in every level, whether it's a business or, you know. In his teacher or anywhere, then then I think it's going to be better for for whole community and whole country. Yeah. yeah. Well, and one thing I I noticed in Acts recently, and that it's more something I've, I noticed people never talk about in Acts, is that as the Great Commission goes forward in the world, there's clearly a goal to speak this to the governing authorities. Right. It's not. Now, it's not like a utopian idea of we're going to get to Caesar and Caesar will become a Christian. Right. Caesar did not become a Christian. Yeah. He executed Paul. Right. But there's still the goal, Jesus', Jesus specific intention, you're going to stand before Caesar and say these things. Mm. So that, that holding them to that standard of there is a master above you mm. who, know it or not, you are a servant of. Mm. And if you don't act like you're the servant of that master, it's to your detriment and peril, right. fundamentally. And that has to be part of our message. Mm-hmm. And if it's not part of our message, we're not. We don't look like the Christianity that embodies the New Testament. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably a good place to uh, to uh, to wrap it up. Great. But thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, awesome. Appreciate you coming all this way for this conversation. Yeah. Thank you.